Dawah is deception. And if you want proof that Dawah is deception, just take a careful look at any of the arguments that Muslim scholars and apologists use to show that Islam is true. Take one of their favorite so-called scientific miracles of the Quran, the miracle of iron being sent down from outer space. Muslims are extremely proud of this miracle, so there are endless videos about it on YouTube. Quran miracle, God sent down the iron, confirmed by Discovery Channel. Miracle of iron in Quran and science. Quran, iron was sent down from space. Iron, scientific miracles of Quran, animated. Iron was sent down from outer space, revealed in Quran. Evidence the Quran is from God. Iron in the Quran. Scientific miracles of the Quran. The mystery of iron. In videos like these, Muslim scholars and apologists quote part of Surah 57 verse 25 of the Quran. They always quote part of it. Why? Because as we'll soon see, quoting the full verse would ruin everything. So they only quote part of it. The Surah Al-Hadid is Surah number 57 of the Quran and Allah uses the word, we sent down iron. We sent down iron. The Quran says the following on the origin of iron. We sent down iron with its great inherent strength and its many benefits for humankind. The following is stated in verse 25 of the chapter of Al-Hadid. And we and also, also sent down, down iron, iron in which, in which there, there lies great lies force, force and which, and has, which many has many uses, uses for, mankind. for mankind. Does the echo help make it sound like it came from God? Dawa is deception. deception. Then they draw attention to the sent down part. The thing of it is, Allah speaks about creating lots of different things in the Quran. But for all of them, He uses a verb called khalaqa or to create. He created the heavens and the earth. He created life and death. He created, He created, He created. But when He speaks of iron, He didn't say He created it. He said, He sent it down. He sent it down. God uses the words sent down for iron. It is clear from the verse that iron is not an earthly material, but was sent down for the benefit of humanity. The word anzalna, used for the formation of iron in the verse, means we sent down. Then they show that, according to modern science, iron was formed inside stars billions of years ago. The stars exploded, sending iron through space, until some of it ended up right here. In the 20th century, geologists coming to certain agreements about the beginnings of the Earth, one of them being that iron is not part of the original Earth, it actually came to the Earth in the form of meteors and was buried deep into the core of the Earth. Iron is not natural to the Earth. It did not form on the Earth but came down to Earth from outer space. Scientists have found that billions of years ago, the Earth was stuck by meteorites. These meteorites were carrying iron from distant stars, which had exploded. Iron can only be produced in stars much larger than the Sun, where the temperature reaches a few hundred million degrees. All astronomic discoveries have put forth that the mineral of iron comes from huge stars from outer space. Iron is an element we find but as scientists tell us that iron is not made on Earth, rather it's made inside super red giants. The stars that are red super giants, that's where iron is made and it comes from the sky and is brought down to the Earth with the meteoroids and others hitting their planet. And that's where it came from, that's what scientists, they tell us today. The Quran, it told us this in chapter 57 verse 25. So the Quran says that iron was sent down. What does this tell us about iron? It tells us that it came from outer space to fill the world with terror, to bring you unforgettable suspense. What conclusion should we draw? So the word used, iron, we sent down iron, becomes a very accurate depiction of the reality of iron because it was sent down. The fact that iron came down to earth from outer space is something which could not be known by the primitive science of the 7th century. It is not possible for this knowledge to be known in the age when the Quran was revealed, that is, 1400 years ago. 
since it is not possible, how can it be explained that this information exists within the Quran? There you have it. Another airtight Quran miracle. This is the point where gullible people say, you know, I'm just going to assume that the apologists and scholars in these videos are giving me accurate information. I'm going to assume that they're not trying to deceive me. After all, why would they try to deceive me about their book? So even though I could spend five or ten minutes doing some very easy research to verify what they're saying, I'm just going to accept everything they say without question. Muslim apologists and scholars love people who believe whatever they say without bothering to investigate. Because what happens if we investigate? Well, if we decided to investigate, we could spend two minutes or so trying to figure out if people in the ancient world knew that iron came down from the sky. And if we did spend two minutes or so trying to figure out if people in the ancient world knew that iron came down from the sky, we would find that ancient cultures, such as the Egyptians and Babylonians, did indeed know that iron came down from the sky. As we read in Smithsonian Magazine, to the ancient Egyptians, iron was known as the metal of heaven, says the University College London. In the hieroglyphic language of the ancient Egyptians, it was pronounced ba and pet, meaning either stone or metal of heaven. For thousands of years before they learned to smelt iron ore, Egyptians were crafting beads and trinkets from it, harvesting the metal from fallen meteorites. So the Egyptians knew that meteorites came down from the sky, and they knew that these meteorites were made of what they called metal of heaven, iron. I guess that makes them prophets, since there's no way anyone could know that those chunks of metal that fell out of the sky fell out of the sky. Only Allah could reveal that something that fell out of the sky fell out of the sky. But let's ignore problems like this. Let's be generous and pretend that ancient cultures didn't know that meteorites fell from the sky and that iron came from these meteorites. Let's pretend that the only way anyone could ever know that iron falls out of the sky is through divine revelation. When the Quran says that iron was sent down, does it mean that iron was formed in stars billions of years ago and eventually made its way here? Recall that Numan Ali Khan, one of the most popular Muslim speakers in the world before the scandals, claims that when Allah wants to say that he created something, he always just says that he created it. The thing of it is, Allah speaks about creating lots of different things in the Qur'an. But for all of them, he uses a verb called khalaqa, or to create. He created the heavens and the earth. He created life and death. He created, he created, he created. But in Surah 57, verse 25, Allah says He sent iron down. So He can't just be saying that He created iron. But when He speaks of iron, He didn't say He created it. He said He sent it down. He sent it down. And this puzzled Islamic scholars because Allah is very precise in His choice of words. And scholars of the past we're grappling with this issue. Why? Because, you know, the words of God are very precise. This is our belief. So when someone would argue, what he sent, he sent it down. He meant he created it. No, if he meant he created it, he would have said, he created it. He didn't mean that. He meant specifically that he sent it down. So why would Allah always, always, always say that he created something, but here say that he sent it down? Since Allah is so amazingly precise, He must be telling us that He created iron in stars and then sent it here from space. Now, has Numan Ali Khan read the Quran? If he's read the Quran, he knows that he's lying. Watch what happens if we just read the entire verse that Muslim apologists always conveniently forget to quote. Surah 57, verse 25. Indeed, we sent our messengers with the clear signs, and we sent down with them the book and the balance so that men might uphold justice. And we sent down iron, wherein is great might and many uses for men, and so that God might know who helps him and his messengers in the unseen. Surely God is all strong, almighty. So, according to Muslim apologists, Sent down means made it in stars billions of years ago and then sent it down from outer space. 
But in context, Allah is mentioning multiple things that he sent down. Allah says that he sent down the book and the balance and iron. Same Arabic word, by the way, anzalna. Remember, Allah is extremely precise in his choice of words. When he says sent down, he means sent down from outer space. So the book and the balance came from outer space. But notice, Allah sent down the book and the balance with them. With whom? With the messengers. So if the book and the balance were sent down, and they were sent down with the messengers, it really sounds like the messengers were sent down. But this would mean that prophets aren't born here on earth, they come from outer space. Now you know why Muslim apologists only quote part of the verse. If they quoted the entire verse, people would see an obvious problem with the argument, and people might start to wonder if sent down really means that Allah formed something inside stars and sent it down from outer space. People might even decide to do a quick search and see what else Allah sent down in the Quran. If they do that, here's what they'll find. Surah 2. Verse 22 talks about Allah, who has made the earth your couch and the heavens your canopy and sent down rain from the heavens. Sent down rain from the heavens. He specifically says that he sent rain from the heavens. That has to mean from the stars, right? I mean, Allah is extremely precise in his choice of words, after all. I'll just remind you that rain is part of the water cycle here on good old planet Earth. Surah 2, verse 57. And we caused the white cloud to overshadow you and sent down on you the manna and the quails. Allah sent down manna and quails. Where did he send them from? From outer space, right? That's what sent down means, doesn't it? So Allah didn't simply blow a flock of quails from one place on earth to another place on earth. No, he made these quails inside stars billions of years ago and sent them to earth. Surah 39, verse 6. He created you all from a single person, then created of like nature his mate. And he sent down for you eight head of cattle in pairs. Allah sent down cattle. Notice, with the rain and the manna and the quails, these things were at least coming down from somewhere above us. But Allah says that he sent down cattle. What does that mean? Should be an easy question because Allah is precise and he wouldn't say sent down unless he meant sent down from outer space. If he had meant created cattle, he would have said created cattle. But that's not what he said. He said sent down and that means sent down from outer space. So cows, came from outer space. How's the Quran lining up with modern science? Surah 7, verse 26. Allah declares, O children of Adam, we have indeed sent down to you clothing to cover your shame. Same super precise Arabic word, anzalna, Allah sent down clothing. So clothes come from outer space. Look at my pants with the eyes in your face. Now, we could keep going. Allah says he sent down the Torah. He sent down a surah of the Quran. He sent down his tranquility and sent down hosts of angels and sent down light and sent down food. He sent down punishment on those who dismember the Quran. Wow, the Quran has been dismembered? I wonder why Allah chose that word. So Allah sent down the balance, he sent down rain, he sent down manna, he sent down quails, he sent down cattle, he sent down clothing, he sent down the Torah, he sent down a surah, he sent down tranquility, he sent down angels, he sent down light, he sent down food, he sent down punishment, he sent down iron. How scientifically precise is this word? It sounds like the least precise word ever. Do Muslim scholars and apologists know that sent down is extremely imprecise? Do they know that it makes no sense to claim that sent down means formed in stars and sent down from outer space when the Quran claims that cattle and clothing were sent down? Of course they do. 
But what do they tell their listeners? They tell their listeners that when Allah is talking about creating something, He says He created it. But in this special place in the Quran, Surah 57, verse 25, where He says that He sent down iron, He's using an extremely precise word that can only mean He sent it from outer space. You know, if I saw a Christian scholar doing this, just lying for some cheap evangelism points, I wouldn't trust him anymore. But for some reason, Muslim scholars and apologists can deceive their listeners over and over and over again, and it never seems to bother their audience. What does this tell us about their religion? Nothing good, I'm afraid. There is more we could say on this issue. For instance, we could point out that according to Surah 41, verses 9 through 12, Allah created the earth and its mountains and its food. I'm sure you know that the earth has an iron core. By weight, iron makes up about a third of the earth. So if the earth was up and running, then iron was already there. But it was only after the earth was up and running with its iron core that Allah created the stars. Obviously, stars weren't created billions of years before the earth if they were created after the earth. Now, Muslim scholars and apologists could always claim that Allah isn't being literal in Surah 41. But there are two problems with this response. One, these Muslim scholars and apologists are the same people who tell us that Allah is shockingly precise in His choice of words. So why would He use the least precise word in history to tell us where iron came from, but then give us a precise sequence of events to say the exact opposite of what He means? Two, I can't believe anything these scholars and apologists say because they never stop lying to us. How many times do we have to catch them lying before we all realize that dawah is deception? Let me ask our Muslim friends out there, those who aren't scholars or apologists, why doesn't it bother you, even slightly, that your favorite scholars and apologists can't defend your religion without deception? Why are the heroes of Dawah the biggest liars in the world? Why would the truth need their lies? This is a power of religion, there's a reason to it. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah?